Here we go. Omnimovie Movie uses full-size VHS tapes. Place Hollywood movies for your own. <laughs> that really got you there at the end. Hello. Welcome. It's a retro review this week. You're listening to the Matt and Mark Movie Show. And this week, we're going to be reviewing the original Beetlejuice from 1988. And you may be saying to yourself, why would you do this? Twofold. One, we're going to be reviewing the new Beetlejuice next week. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. And two, most importantly, the reason I wanted to do this episode. And I'm going to talk to Mark about this. Mark has never seen this movie before, <laughs> right? Actually, when you said 1988, I was like, holy shit, this movie is old. Is it Dude, 1988? 1988. Is it? Because Jesus. it was the year before Tim Burton made Batman, which was 89. So this was That's 1988, crazy. dude. Crazy year for movies. 88, Die Hard was also 1988. Who Framed Roger Rabbit was also 1988. Crazy fucking Man, year. Movies but were really cool back in the 80s, movies actually. Movies were better. Those late 80s movies were the yeah. shit. They were better. But here's the crazy part is I, like I think most people my age, our age, grew up with Beetlejuice, like saw the movie and remembered watching the cartoon. There was an animated series for a long time on Saturday mornings. I don't oh, know if you remember shit. that. And um, there was even a couple video games and stuff like Beetlejuice was definitely a part of my childhood. So when I asked you if you had ever seen it, and you said, no, dude, it blew my fucking mind. So I am super I curious to hear what you have to say about this movie. Oh, interesting. Yeah, well, here's the thing is, like, I do remember everyone else's fervor over this movie back in the day because it's, like, people I knew love... The, everyone I know from my childhood loves Beetlejuice. Talk about it all the time. I never understood, like, that... You know, I guess, were they sandworms or something? The right? sandworm, yeah. The sandworm. Yeah, so, like, I would hear that joke all the time, and I never understood it until now. And now I get what they're talking until about. Until you <laughs> saw Dune and Dune 2. Whoops, wrong movie. <laughs> um, we're going to get These to Mark's... These are way cooler. These are way better. We're going to get to Mark's first time uh, Beetlejuice experience. But first, some housekeeping. And it's not technically spooky spooky season, but it, but it kind of feels like it is. So I'm just going to play this again. <laughs> this second horror Second movie. time. Second time. Kind of spooky, if you think about it. That's right. It is kind of spooky, if you think about it. Hey, it's housekeeping. Really quick. Mark, you know this. I put up our, since our Patreon is fucking dead, speaking of ghosts and horror movies, since our <laughs> Patreon is deader than most of the ghosts in this movie, I am starting to put some of the ex exclusive content on our main feed, and this weekend I put out the Willow commentary. So if you're hearing this... That's a good right now, one. Yeah, you can go and listen to our Willow commentary. It's available for everybody. You can stream it. I think it's fucking awesome. I think we have, we've only done two commentaries, and I am going to release the other one probably they maybe in a couple do. weeks or maybe next month. Um, yeah, dude. I, I think it's the best one we, we've done thus far, right? Of the two. <laughs> of the two. It's clearly the better one. It's far one away One is going to be one. better, and it's this one. <laughs> it's the first one. Yeah, that's right. Um, I actually really enjoyed doing that. That was really fun, actually, to just nerd out with you about great. that movie. So check that shit out, fellas. Goddamn right. Also, and then uh, subscribe and ring the bell. <laughs> subscribe and ring the bell and do all the YouTube crap. Speaking of YouTube, follow us on YouTube, like and subscribe there, as Mark said. We also have a voicemail if you want to connect with us. Call us. The voicemail is 707-948-6707. Socials, Instagram, at the Matt and Mark Movie Show. That's it. That's all I got to say. You know what? Somebody actually asked me this last week, so I'm just going to say it here. We also have an email. If you if you do want to email us, <laughs> it's, it's Matt. Older and older. Yeah, dude. It's Matt and Mark Movie Show at gmail.com. Soon we'll have a fucking AOL address. <laughs> we'll drive like, a Morse code. <laughs> <laughs> if, if you want to send us a teletype, you can we go. We got a message from Jeff. <laughs> like, oh, it's a Western Union. It's very long. It's in eight parts. Must be from Jeff. 
Speaking of, dude, Jeff he was it all from his car. Jeff was all <laughs> active on the text thread this weekend. I was very I surprised. I'm like, hmm. I thought he died. I thought Jeff had died too. <laughs> I was prepared to use the handbook for the recently deceased to contact Jeff. Turns out he's alive. <laughs> <laughs> why is that funny okay <laughs> let's get down to brass fucking tax here people so listen i'm not gonna ring the spoiler bell because i think most of you know this movie by heart i think if you haven't seen beetlejuice the statute of limitations is up this is over almost 30 years old so mark first time beetlejuice wait let's warm the people up you like you like tim burton right especially from this oh, era you tim like his burton. movies yeah yeah it's weird. It's you know what it is. It's like, I think I I've seen his I've seen Edward Scissorhands. I've seen uh, what's the one he did with uh, the black and white ones that I can't remember. Ed Wood. Talk about Ed Wood. Ed Wood. Okay, yeah. So Great I like movie. I love I'm pretty much all of Tim Burton's movies I've loved, but for some reason it's like I never got to watch this one. And it's mainly because, as most people know, I have a super conservative yes. upbringing, so this was considered like. Made by demons. Yes, I that's what I. Par- that's what I wanted to ask hated you. Tim Burton. They was always this like thought though, Tim Burton was like the devil. <laughs> but because this is a movie that's predominantly about the afterlife and ghosts and demonic spirits, do you think that is that the chief reason they were like, "Fuck no, you're not watching this"? They probably thought. I mean, I, you know what the thing is? Not to crap on conservative Christian families, but. They have a really skewed perspective on what pop it's okay. They don't is. listen to this show, so it's like, okay. It's good, <laughs> fuck them anyway. So it's sort of like they were under the impression that this was like it's a fucking demonic, and then like you know, I would go to these camps and it would be like the dangers of rock and roll. And it's who do they use? <laughs> I'm, I swear to god, who do they use as the prime examples? It's fucking ACDC and Meatloaf and like, Meatloaf, and League with oh, and Meatloaf. because. Meatloaf had bad out of hell. Bad out of hell. That's right. I would have thought they would but have gone the, for Kiss. Wasn't Kiss the the knights? No, of, they were Satan's also service? The, yeah. They were also super evil. They, they were, did an episode of Scooby Doo. They're demonic. Yeah, and also you know the one Guar Guar super Dude, evil. Dude, Guar rules. Space demons. But you know what the funny thing is? Like you listen to this stuff as an adult, and you're like, Penguin Attack was satanic. Yeah. How? Is, yeah, exactly. Is like, exactly. This this movie Uterus I was totally expecting. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so I was expecting like demons to be coming out like butt raping people, but you know, it was really no. tame. And it's basically aside from the few Mark, that's, bombs that he dropped. That's the sequel. <laughs> that's Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice is where the demonic butt rape happens. It doesn't happen this week. It's gonna happen next week. So get warmed up for that. Oh, okay, I'll say, uh, I'll take my mom to that one. But you know the funny <laughs> thing is, it's like I think my mom refuses to watch Edward Scissorhands. And I'm like, Mom, you know what? This is actually a really sweet, yeah. And that's good, that's like the most sweet movie. fairy tale esque one I can think of. Why yeah. wouldn't she want to watch I, that? Well, the thing is, is, I'm telling you, like in the he dresses like he world, went to Hot Topic. Tim, that's why. Just if you think of, yeah, pretty much it. It's, it's like, oh no, it's they're wearing all black. That means they're of the devil. So it's kind of like you can win. <laughs> but if Edward Scissorhands looks like some like. You know, he's got his stupid polo shirt, and he had, like, nice scissor If hands Edward and... Scissorhands shopped at Old Navy and not Hot Topic, yeah. your mom would totally be down with Edward Scissorhands. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know, it just, it's such an odd thing to grow up in that lifestyle. Just put Edward that... Scissorhands in, like, some J. Crew fucking shirts. Gap. Gap shit. Gap pants Was that or whatever. Like American Eagle or whatever crap. Oh, American Eagles, definitely for the, um... That's for the the guys who like to you know slip roofies into drinks. I think. <laughs> we got wasn't American Eagle the store? Can you I always Abercrombie and Fitch. Edward I remember. I remember there was he a store abs. in the mall where there were always guys outside with no shirts on. Do you know what I'm talking about? Abercrombie and Fitch. Is that Abercrombie? Abercrombie yes. producer in the booth is saying it's Abercrombie. I thought it was American Eagle. No, no, that I think that was more like. More clothes. No, there they were bottomless. These were these were the unclothes. <laughs> also satanic, according to my family. Oh yes, because nudity is Fitch also is the devil. <laughs> nudity is also satanic. Those satanic so, abs. Pull all right, away! so you, 
Mark expected a demonic freak fest. Mark, what did you yeah. get when you actually sat I down to watch Beetlejuice? I thought this was going to be like Event Horizon in a house. But it was yeah, just, dude. Did you think it really was going to be like sweet. gore by way of The Exorcist, by way of like fucking Coffin Joe? By I'm trying to think of all the gnarliest <laughs> shit. Anthropophagus, like the craziest movies ever. And then what he winds up getting is a fucking comedy that is like... <laughs> Yeah, it's like a. It's actually the thing is, it's actually most of Tim Burton movies I found they have like a lot of heart and soul, and they're very sweet movies. Yeah, they and this one like, is sweet too. Yeah, you know, catch you in the heart strength. This one was great. I honestly, but but to be honest, I didn't realize it was like at least from a Michael Keaton perspective, I didn't realize that there would drop f bombs, and I always thought this was kind of like a PG PG thirteen movie, and it was like it's pretty. Listen, Mark, it more like... the 80s were the Wild West for ratings, Mark. We could get away with PG? showing... I think it's... P... I want to say it might be PG-13, but we can get away with a couple with a couple fucks. We can get away with, like, maybe a nip slip here and there. There's no nip in this movie. but um, No, there's none. You can get away. It's the, it's the Wild West, so you can get away with some shit, right? When he honks his dick and he goes, nice fucking model. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I used. <laughs> that's what I wanted to say in our in our live drawing class in freshman year at Pratt. I wanted to go, hey, and we go, here's the model. I go, hong hong, nice fucking model. But then I thought I'd get in trouble, so I didn't do it. <laughs> I wish you did. Then you have to sit there for six hours with this naked person while you pretend to draw them. Dude, the one thing I remember is just like sitting next to you drawing and it was just fucking hilarious oh my god mark and that would draw was just so flustered mark would draw these technically amazing true to life photo real sketches beautiful line work <laughs> the edge of a bosom and mine was like a stick figure with two giant boobies and i would be in some and i was trying no you know what's crazy though i in my closet i have some of your drawings I saved some of your sketches because they're awesome. You're like, one day I'll sell Basil these as smut. <laughs> this smut will pay for my ticket to Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. <laughs> Mark, so you liked the movie, oh. right? Yeah, it was super fun. It was not. It was nothing I expected it to be. It was. It almost had like. I would say it has this, what I thought was cool about it. It was because it's like it deals with a lot in the afterlife world as well as the real world. It had a, almost like a Brazil vibe when you got to like this bureaucratic oh, yeah. afterlife, which I thought was cool. Good Very call. neat. I, I to be honest, until you told me that this was eighty eight. I honestly thought this movie was like early nineties and just because how technically it looks really good. It it looks way more contemporary than some I've watched I've watched a couple eighties movies of recent and it's and my brother and I would be like, you know what's crazy? Does don't these eighties movies look so seventies and old? And this was one of the first eighties and yes it is later eighties, but it was the first eighties movie where it was like this is aged extremely well to a degree where it does not feel like it was in that era. Yes. In fact, it stands out as looking a much more polished that, than some of these other movies. And I think that a lot of that has to do with the crazy fucking set design and lighting design in this movie. They knocked it out of the fucking park. Like, oh, yeah. it feels removed. It truly feels removed from reality. I remember... So, like I said in the open, I've seen this movie. Uh, uh, I've probably seen this movie like fifty times, dude. It's one of those movies I've seen. <laughs> I've seen it like I. I'm going to tell you, like I kind of tune out here and there because I've just seen it so much. I know, I know the movie. Literally, I was Is just it on your vacation. Movie. <laughs> it could be. Literally, I was just on vacation like a couple months ago when Jess and I went to Carmel, and one of the movies we wound up watching in the hotel room was Beetlejuice because the movie's always on cable. It's always on cable. You can always say since 1988, it has had a long history of always being on cable. And we watched it because it's just kind of like it's as natural to us as air or water. Like, yeah, Beetlejuice is just kind of on. And we don't have to watch the scenes. We could be in the other room to brushing our teeth and we know exactly the moment, exactly the line. We can picture it. Um, I love this movie, man. It's, it's it, is it my favorite Tim Burton? Probably not, but it's up there. I would, I would put it in my top three. Maybe that's a good question for you. Where does this sit in your, in your favorite, in your favorites of Tim? Because I would tell you, yeah. I think my top three go like this. 
Batman 89, I think, for obvious reasons. Yeah, of course. And then I'm, I'm going to shock you, dude. I think I would go Ed Wood. Then I would go Beetlejuice. And then I'm going to throw one more in. Because I love this movie, and people fucking hate it, and Big I'm tired. Fish. No, I actually do like Big Fish a lot. Uh, but it's it's Mars Attacks. I fucking love Mars oh, Attacks. Oh, yes. That is it's one great. of my favorite comedies It's fucking ever. great. Listen, actually, the CG doesn't hold up. It looks super cartoony, but I kind of think that adds to it now. <laughs> so... I love no, it. No, I think you're. It, it, it kind of. It's kind of supposed to be schlocky, and yes. I, I saw it. Re, like maybe I saw it maybe like a year and a half ago, and it to me it stood up. And I I agree with you. It it's nice when it has that kind of like tacky look to it because it's trying to copy those like pulp yeah. novels. But going back to your original question, it is actually that's a super tough question because he has so many good movies. It's hard to place them. Yeah, but I would say. In terms of just feeling, I love Edward Scissorhands. So that's number one. Great movie. Ed Wood is number two. Batman is three. Batman Returns is probably four. Oof, yep. And I think I, I might put, I think it'll hit the top five. Beetlejuice will Damn. be in there just because it's just it just stands out above all these like other movies I've been watching from that year. And I think it should account for something. He's like way ahead of his time. I like seeing, what I like about it is it's not just... It's I I like when movies are movies and it's like here's a new universe that you're invited to to be in. I don't yeah. like it when it's just like it's another contemporary movie and we just have these actors in them. And Everything this one was, like is even super unique. Tool, yeah, even like that digging tool for the house was those yes. weird claws. What I was going to say like, like seated in reality. Even the real world, quote unquote, in the movie feels like a fantastical Tim Burton world. So then when you yeah. get to the fantastical underworld it fucking takes your breath away because of how different and unique it is. Like, I also think about, oh, yeah. too, there are actually a lot of ghost comedies. I was thinking about this when I when we were, picked this to review. I was like, oh, you got your Ghostbusters. You got your High Spirits, Neil Jordan. You got your fucking The Frighteners, Peter Jackson, right? You've got funny ghost good. movies, right? But this one stands out because I think it's it it does the it does it does both things well. I think each of those movies, you could argue, kind of does one or the other, right? I think Frighteners does scares a little better than it does comedy, right? This, it does both well. It's like, here's this kind of crazy fucked up world. And it, and it's kind of helped by the fact that, like, it's not trying to be a scary movie, but some of the ideas are very frightening and some of the way that they're portrayed is kind of frightening. But then it doubles down on comedy and it does both. And it's just like, I think that's why it's endured, man, because it's so fucking weird and and unique and I, and I mean that in a good way like there's no other movie like i kept trying to think about that i was like well what's a movie i could compare this to for mark when i was like oh you gotta watch it and i couldn't i couldn't come it's up with tough. another movie that's like beetlejuice there's no other movie that's yeah. like it i think that's why in my list it's definitely top five just because of how unique it is and then you start to like when i was watching it you think of it in terms of other movies it's influence like Coraline. You can yes. see how they totally a lot of yes. the aesthetics are like basically taken directly from this movie. And I would say if you were to sum it up, I, co I don't even think you can categorize it because it fits into to so many genres nicely and neatly because it is like a, a nice slice of each genre combined. It's just a fun movie. There's no other oh, word to I'm put so into glad. it. There. Dude, it's I'm so glad fun. you liked it because I wasn't sure because I know sometimes – when it comes to like spooky kind of things, you don't love the inclusion of comedy so much. Like for Mark, <laughs> I feel like it, it's got to be infused. The balance has to be just right. So like, I think it's a testament to the quality of this movie that you really liked it. Cause I was kind of yeah. ready for you to be like, this is a bit much for me. So I'm well, shocked. I, I, dude. I, I'm shocked. I think when it started, it wasn't anything I expected. And, I, and initially I was like, Oh man, what is this? I was like expecting this, like, you know, you expect Beetlejuice to be, like, there from the onset. He doesn't appear really appear until, like, maybe 30, 40 minutes later, and then he yes. starts to become more prominent as the and movie progresses. But if you, if you add up his screen time, insane. I think his screen time's only, like, 15 minutes. It's yeah, fucking he's, crazy he's, how he's, little he, he is did, in the movie. He did another Silence of the Lambs, where it's just, like, the guy that's in it the least stands out the most. And it's just oh, because yes. he also... It's crazy how different he is, and it's kind of funny to think that, like, you said this was before Batman. It's yeah. crazy to me to think that 
he went from this like zany goofy version of michael keaton that like you don't see in any other movie and then next he's in this like way more serious role as batman and he pulls it off by the way yeah he does both, both great these, he's awesome yeah. i didn't realize he was that good at, in like a comedic role his timing the way i'm wondering if he improvised a lot of stuff but some of the things he says and and does is it's just like you can tell it almost feels like he's had that comedic background as someone like a steve martin he does, yeah. doesn't well, he... feel unnatural to him it feels like he is naturally a comedic person, and it he, shines in this movie. He, in the early 80s, he did a lot of comedies. Like, he was in Night oh, Shift, really? Mr. Mom, uh, Johnny Dangerously. These were, like, all big comedies that he was in. Um, and not all yeah, of them are great. not familiar with those. But, yeah, like, he started out as a comedic actor, like, basically like an Owen Wilson. He was, like, a comedic actor, and his whole thing was that he was edgy and a little weird, and you didn't really know. So that kind of made him perfect if you think about it as the entry point for Tim Burton, because they were like, this guy's funny, but he's a little odd. And it's like, oh, well, fuck it. Put him with, put him with Mr. Hot Topic over here. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a match made in heaven because he turns out in Beetlejuice. Like, I will say this, you know me, I'm one of these people that it's hard for me to lose sight of an actor and character. When I yeah. see Batman, I see Michael Keaton. And I, and I say that in a good way. I can sense him beneath the mask and I see him obviously as Bruce Wayne. When he's in Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice does not... There's no Michael Keaton there, dude. Beetlejuice is a fucking real person to me. He's a character. I can't tell it's Michael Keaton. I look at that motherfucker. I hear him talk. I see him moving in a scene, and I'm like, I don't know who that is. <laughs> it's fucking well, crazy. Too is like, the makeup is so good and blended so well. And then he has that, like, that kind of overbite, too. Yes. So it's like his facial features are all fucked up, and he's got the crazy frizzy hair. And... I know you're right. It make it doesn't. You kind of disconnect from Michael Keaton. You're like, this is just a really fucking weird character. But have you ever way, seen? Have like, you ever seen uh, Multiplicity, the movie where he is cloned? I think, I believe I did. I actually saw that recently, and I okay. remember it was it was fun. I liked so it. So do you? I do. I do too. I like that movie too. Do you remember the the second clone he makes? The like tough guy clone that does all the like super manly duties around the house, like. If something breaks, he repairs that. it. He has a construction job. He, like, there's, like, three Michael Keaton clones. There's, like, the super responsible one who's, like, kind of effeminate and they play him kind of gay. There's the super tough guy one who does all the macho shit. He, like, works outside. And then there's the one <laughs> that's a little slow, right? Because he's, like, the copy of the copy. The tough guy, if you listen to him, sometimes he slips into the Beetlejuice voice a little bit. Because oh, he's really? doing the, like, hey, macho, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. like, and it sounds just like fucking Beetlejuice. And that's the only time I can look at that guy and be like, oh, that's Beetlejuice. Right? But if I see him in Beetlejuice, even in the <laughs> new movie, dude, in the trailers, I'm like, that's not Michael Keaton. I don't know who the fuck that is. I don't know who that is. It's a it's guy. Cool you see an actor that can do that, or they just transform into something else. Yes, totally. And you just completely believe it. You're like, okay, I don't see any resemblance to the actor. He's just his own <laughs> character because i think there are so few of those dude like freddy krueger robert england i think is one where like i don't see past the makeup i'm oh, like yeah. that's a real person fucking willem dafoe and shadow the vampire i'm like that's nosferatu i don't see willem dafoe right i'm not even joking and i think beetlejuice would be in that list i don't see a person there dude he's he's a fucking that's actually pretty Im bio exorcist impressive. because even in silence of the lambs you're still like it's Anthony That's Hopkins. Anthony Hopkins. Yes, know? totally. But yeah. in this one, it's just like, this is just some other weird, crazy dude. Yes. And also, like, it's he just pops out of nowhere. And he's, it's almost like he's like this whirlwind character that just appears. He's like this, this like an embodiment of chaos. I don't know. Yes. It's really, he jolts the movie really awake whenever way. he's there. Yeah. But, but the movie's no slouch when he's gone either. Like, I love, it's such a clever idea, like, like yes matt obviously movie that has endured for 30 years is very clever i know it's <laughs> but i'm just pointing it out i think it's ingenious as a plot device to say our plot is not going to be about people trying to get ghosts out it's about ghosts trying to get people out like it's such a clever that reversal is cool, yeah right when you're with the maitlands when you're with gina davis and alec baldwin in their day and like they're such a sweet couple right away you kind of like already root for them and it's great like they're the dorks who would try to fucking, you know what I mean? Like, they would drink juice smoothies and shit and fucking try to, like, you know, they jog the bridge together, right? That covered bridge, right? And, like, 
Yeah, if they died, they would approach death the same way they approached life. Like, hey, you know what we should try? We should try and scare these people. But, like, they're not even fucking yeah. good at it because they've got no imagination, right? And that's where Beetlejuice I do comes. also. I do also like it's like they finally got their own house and they're, like, building in the way they want. And then they finally died. And it's like they also have to watch these new people move in and basically tear down everything they've built yes. up. And they're just like, ah, these fucking people. With their horrible fucking modern art tastes. <laughs> They're fucking turn these those horrible sculptures, dude. The fucking <laughs> Otho, the interior decorator. I love that guy. That's a, that's Glenn Shadix. He's a fucking amazing character actor. Rest in peace. Oh, he's dead. He died. Uh, he died a little while ago. Um, that guy's fucking great. But I also love our that favorite that... character actors in it. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, our buddy who we can't mention from Howard the Duck, but you know who he is. You know what I heard. <laughs> In the new movie, he's not in it. He his character died. Gee, that's, I what, why. that's what brings them all together. I was like, yeah, exactly. I know why you chose that one. <laughs> Tim Burton had like an easy choice when he's writing, and he's like, "I eh, just kill this guy." He sucks. There was like, he was like, "That guy sucks. I can't cast him." Alec Baldwin shot someone. I can't cast him again. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but he's like. Uh, I can't have Gina Davis alone. That would be sad because it'll make you think that she lost her ghost husband. So she's not in it either. <laughs> dude, you know what's crazy, by the way? How I know I'm not trying to fat shame anyone, but dude, Alec Baldwin looks so different. Talk, uh, talk about a transformation <laughs> from murderer Alec Baldwin <laughs> to like wholesome <laughs> Alec Baldwin. Fat with the violence of a murder. <laughs> allegedly, we should say allegedly. <laughs> He when he was a young innocent man. It's weird to see him as like he's this everyday guy. You yes, know? he's just like a cool like they don't have kids, but he's basically the equivalent of a cool dad. He's just like a nice yeah. guy, kind of oafish, kind of silly, but like you like him. He's fucking great. I think this might be the most likable Alec Baldwin has ever been in a movie. I think it might be his one yeah. friendly part because every other even role when he's, he's trying Alec to Baldwin. terrify people. Yeah, even yeah, when he's yeah. trying to terrify people, he's still like kind of like friendly, and you yes, like, hang even out when you get like, those that guy's pretty fun. Those great makeups where they like <laughs> try to distort them. their faces, and he pulls his face inside out. He's still charming. It still works. By the way, that I the one thing I loved about that makeup is they kept it on, but. Even though they didn't have to, underneath that overhang, you can still see his jaw moving. Yes. And you know how we were impressed with Howard the Duck? I was like, wow, they, some of these, like, you know, makeup appliances with animatronics look fucking dope. Yeah, it's like, why are we so not good, doing dude. those more? And then you see, like, some Marvel characters where they're just, like, they're, like, supplemented with CG, and they just look so, yeah. like, unreal. Dude. You could hold, dude, you could do a comparison with the Howard the Duck from the movie and the Howard the Duck we see in the Guardians of the Galaxy movie. That yeah. that CG one is a farce compared to the real Howard the Duck. It's fucking crazy. How how you know how sad? low we've sank. It's crazy. No, but you know what's sad about that? It's like if you think about all this animatronics technology back in the day, like Jurassic Park and how amazing it looked. It's like what the fuck would if those studios were still doing that and those effects houses were still around, like I wonder what they would look like now. Like, can you imagine how amazing the detail would be? And they don't, yes. they just don't do it. We'll never know. Because also, sad. also dead was Stan Winston's studio. The people who made physical, practical effects. Those poor bastards are out of a job too. Dude, there's even stop motion in this movie that looks incredible. When he turns into the snake, the Beetlejuice snake, to terrify the family, that shit looks so good. I also love, that might be my favorite sequence of the movie is the way that that unfolds where like she's running her hand along the banister and then you see it kind of gently turn into snake skin. And you're like, what the fuck is that? Cause at first you think, Oh, she's tacky. She has all this weird shit in her house anyway. Right. Maybe that's what the banisters <laughs> look like. And then you turn and see the silhouette kind of like doing the rattlesnake thing. And then you reveal that giant head on the snake, the puppet. It looks so good, man. Oh yeah. And the other, it kind of gave me those, you know, those vibes with the, in Conan, the barbarian, when he's, when uh, Balsa Doom's transforming into the snake, but yes. it's just cut together so well that it makes it really believable. And yes. you're right. There's so many instances in this movie where, yeah, some of the stop motion is kind of designed to be a bit on the cartoony side, but there are a lot of 
like little simple supplemental stop motion that they use. Like one of them was the the door transformed into that more angular, like yes. caricature door. It looked like uh, it like this quick. It looked like the up. M from MTV. Yeah, but it's like <laughs> you know, it's like such a cool, neat way to do it, and it like because it is physical. You even though as exaggerated as this world is, you still believe it just because of everything like the actors can touch and interact with. Yes. And it just it just looks beautiful. It's really colorful. Um I love the color palette in this movie. There's like, you know, you have the underworld color palette and it's like really gritty and then you have like the real it's very bright. The greens are very saturated. Yes. You know that house is like right on top of the hill and it's like this bright white. Oh, it's like it's very it like makes you want to be there almost. As yes, dude. Could you? Li- I could live in this movie. Either one. I could live in the town, or I could live in the underworld. Like both look beautiful to me. <laughs> the yeah, only oh, the room way. I don't want to set foot in is that's the Lost Souls room, where the people oh, are like, yeah. and they're like floating up. I'm like, dude, Fuck that was that. legitimately terrifying. But yes. It's also, that concept when they because they also say it's like this. That's basically where the the ghosts die. And it's like, oh shit, they can die too. Yes. Also, some and of the it's like a really the, uh, creepy, the, um, some of the effects appliances, room. like Juno, the caseworker who has a hole in her throat from smoking. Like that's how she died, and you could see the hole, and she puts the cigarette in it to puff. That's a fucking amazing effect. Yes. The other effect when he's in the waiting room, the guy that always grosses me the fuck out is the guy who choked on the chicken bone because you can see it cartoonishly <laughs> poking horizontally in his neck jutting out Dude, that kind of made me laugh okay. yeah that guy makes me laugh to swallow a bone <laughs> in that direction yeah. and for it to lodge like that it's so is good fucking whole... it's just like a funny joke without even having any words also yes the other thing that was funny too was like just like i know it's like it's a really dark joke but you know all those like football and those like sports teams that oh, yeah. they always die in plane coach crisis? coach what are we gonna do I don't think we made it to the game. Dude, I like that how... is so dark. <laughs> it's so it's good. Still funny. Dude, you know what's dark is the fucking guy who's also in the waiting room that's burnt to a crisp. He's like, hey, how you doing? The guy that looks like an, oh, a yeah. pile he's of ash. He's just like on the other side. Yeah. That guy. And the other one that was creepy, the dude that hung himself and he's just like, but he's got papers in his hand and they just. Yeah, the, just the guy like who's really flat. Down. And he's like, hey, how you doing? Yeah, I've been feeling a little flat. Oh, that the guy, guy that got run over by the car? Yes. He's got the tire treads across his <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That guy always grossed me out as a kid. He still grosses <laughs> me out. The flat man. It's so fucking weird. But that effect of him going through and then it turns to the side and he goes through that slot. Yes. Was yeah. really well they, done. They slide him through like a fucking piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's so it's so <laughs> wonderfully realized, man. And I, that's what I love too is like the simple idea of like, okay, we have all these cool otherworldly, underworldly ideas. Let's turn also those into gags and jokes, right? We have the flat guy who has the line where he's like, I feel a little flat. But you can also have then you can also do the physical gag of him sliding through the crack. It's awesome. It's all kinds of jokes, man. Spoken, verbal, physical, sight gags. It's like it's a fucking treasure trove of shit, man. Um, it is also I'm, very like has a bit of this slight slapstick feel to it, which I always enjoy. Oh, hundred percent, dude. Especially when his like the the shit that I always think of that's uh, slapstick is a great word for it. Um, and also when it's in horror, although it's not technically this, but when it's in horror, I learned a new phrase that I love a year ago. It's splatstick. So if you're watching like oh. Reanimator or Dead Alive, Peter Jackson, like these movies that are super gross, Evil Dead 2 kind of counts, but they're also funny, they call it splatstick, which I actually think is kind of amazing. <laughs> um, this That's one isn't great... as gory enough, to, I think, to constitute a splatstick, but I'm going to stick That's it there because thing... it works. I was actually surprised at how unviolent it was, because when you read and see things about it as a kid, you kind of picture it being a little more extreme. And it's... Yes really tame it's like a it's the perfect level of violence that you would want in a fun movie you don't yeah. want it to be over the top and like disgusting you know but when he pulls off his head and some other stuff it's gory enough but it's not gory to a degree where you're like ah the only violent thing i can think of is the uh the sandworm when it anything with the sandworm when it crashes through and it eats them when they're riding it like that's that's really it the rest of the <laughs> bits are more played for con i know i <laughs> it's because i'm drinking 
I'm having a uh, a ginger ale and Tito's vodka. Oh shit! You're back to the booze. Cheers, back buddy. to the booze. Cheers, brother. Yeah. I um, I can finally have booze. Dude, you know what? And just in time for HHN. For HHN, <laughs> have those cocktails, dude. Those cocktails are so goddamn good. I can't wait. I'm ready, man. I'm fucking ready. There's a there's a Ghostbusters Frozen Empire cocktail that looks like a frozen drink with a marshmallow top on it. It looks oh, so shit. fucking awesome. Yeah, I want that thing. Um, All right. First, here's day, the other man. thing. <laughs> I've heard. I don't know if this is true. But I've heard that the new movie is also trying to stay away from CG as much as possible and embracing the physical effects side just like the original did. And I have a friend. I'm not going to name him. I have a friend who's actually seen the movie. He saw the movie a couple months ago because he's been working on marketing for it. And he he confirmed it for me on text. He was like, yes, the movie is majority physical effects. Like it's either stop mo or like physical effects appliances. There's rubber stuff. He's like, you're going to love it. So I'm oh, very man, that's excited. That's gonna about be it. awesome. By the way, does the new one have a pretty big budget? Like it's been a that's a long ass time to do. <laughs> I a think sequel. it has a big budget, dude. Wait, this is gonna blow your mind. So I was doing a little research for this episode. The budget for Beetlejuice, 1988, Mark. The budget for Beetlejuice, Mark's eyes are gonna pop out of his head. Fifteen million dollars. One five. Holy shit! So, uh, supposedly their VFX budget. A uh, one million dollars. They did all this for a million dollars. That's it. This is a full special effects movie. Everything is special effects. Like every shot is an effects shot. Yes, a million dollars. That's they insane. made it for fifteen million dollars, dude. That's it. Wait, how the fuck did they do that? That's crazy. I don't know. I don't some know. of those sets are freaking massive too. I'd have to think. Plus, all I the hope... time for doing like stop motion as well. The stop mo. All the physical sets, all the sets that have to be built, all the physical makeup applications, all the big effects and opticals, all of your stop motion. It's fucking crazy, dude. For but $15 you know what, million. To dollars. be honest, though, but think about how smart they were doing it because a lot of it has to do with the miniature town that he's building. Yes. So when they do go into the miniature set, they can still use miniatures for effects, and it's believable. Like when he's driving the pickup truck to crash. I love it. that. Yeah, it's I love just that. like a. It's basically a, a toy car that they push on this overhead. <laughs> so it's it's a it's really it, and it looks great because it fits into that realm. So a really smart way of doing things, and I guess it makes sense now because if you had that little, I mean, like a million bucks is nothing for effects, especially when you have a movie that. Is like how long is this movie? And every shot is an every effect shot, shot is basically an effect shot. Yeah, it's fucking crazy, dude. I honestly thought it would be like at least twenty million plus for the budget. Twenty thirty. No, nineteen eighty eight, fifteen million. They treated them. Warner Brothers treated this movie like the fucking redheaded stepchild. They were like, we don't know what you're doing with your perverted ghost movie. Here's fifteen million. Get out of here. They did this they movie. Like, what they got? But did, was this movie like? Is it one of those struggle to make stories, or was it? No, no. Apparently, like once they got going, it was all good. It even made money out of the gate. It was a hit. It wasn't like a cult movie that got discovered later. It has cult status, but it it started life as a hit movie. So wow, that's pretty cool. Actually, kind of an interesting road for a cult movie. It doesn't happen often, but it it happened here. And crazy that the sequel is how many years later? Like twenty six. 26. That's fucking insane. Yeah, 26 years later, dude. Isn't that fucking nuts? Wait, so besides Michael Keaton, who obviously is amazing, were there any other people, members of the cast, that, that blew you away with their performance? Was there anybody that stood out to you? I mean, I think I liked all of them. And uh, who is, I'm trying to think. I mean, they're, I think they're very, they're balanced really well. So I, I enjoyed the whole cast. And maybe it sounds like I'm, I should probably pull up some of their names so I know who they are. I think my favorite person is Otho. I love Glenn Shadix. I just think that guy is so unique and weird. That's like, that's another Tim Burton find of the century is that fucking guy. Like, where the fuck did that guy come from? Great. He's also the guy you recognize Otho. styled him did a great job, too. Yeah, Otho is from Demolition Man. He was uh, Cochran's assistant. Be well. Be (laughs) fucked. Be fucked. (laughs) (laughs) You, I find you one credit of the verbal morality statute. (laughs) 
Actually, you got that toned down perfectly. <laughs> oh, that was it. Catherine O'Hara. She is really she's good. She's great. God, she's that, great. The artist mom. She's yep. super funny. Uh, Winona Ryder's great. Um, I was going to ask you what you thought of Winona, especially too, because you're a big Edward Scissorhands fan. Seeing her in this, she's, this her early stuff, she's awesome. I don't know what happened to her where she just kind of got a bit weird. She yeah, just, I love her. This is was, the era too of her and Heather's. Have you ever seen Heather's? No, but that's one Great of the movies that's movie. been on my watch list for a long time. Great movie. Another good cult, gothy, weird movie for very different reasons, but definitely one you should check out, dude, for sure. Okay, shit. I might have to bump that up on my watch list. Mark, were there yeah, any I, I, big scenes that you came away with where you're like, I loved it, I love this, is my favorite scene in the movie? I mean, it's it's, well, like I said, this is my first time watching it, so I feel as though I have to watch it a few more times so I can really pinpoint specific scenes i did like that dining room scene where all those snakes came out of the bowls oh yes the like hands made out of the shrimp cocktail yeah Yeah. (laughs) you can actually buy a replica of that at spirit halloween right now they have like a hand with the shrimp cocktail hand poking out of a bowl and you can put that on your fucking table if you want yeah i actually just saw it when i went I actually did like the some of the scenes where it got all cemetery man, and it's sort of like the house is this thing floating yes. in some other universe. I love that stuff, and then like the basement has the sandworms. Obviously, that was really cool to see. Uh, I liked. I really enjoyed all the bureaucratic moments of the behind the scenes of being dead when they have to go to that one lady and you know ask her how things are done and. It and people and also the waiting room. There, there's just so there's so many really cool moments in this movie, and it's such yeah. a unique way to like describe the afterlife. It's not like that traditional thing. I like that it's it's almost like the afterlife is just hell, a bureaucratic hell. It's a bureaucratic hellscape. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> hell. Yeah, the afterlife is the DMV. Basically, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so. I think this question is actually better for you than like what to you are your favorite scenes since you've seen it so many times. Did, oh man, which ones the, still stand out for the, you? The things that still stand out to me are the waiting room, him turning into the snake, and more than anything, I know the big famous bit. Everybody quotes, um, "It's showtime," right? But to me, the biggest, craziest thing that I that always sticks out to me, no matter how many times I've seen it, it's the way that the Maitlands look when they raise them up in the seance and they start to age and then she's like, what's wrong with them? And his like fucking jaw falls off. That shit has haunted me since I was a kid. Even now I still find it disturbing. Although I kind of get balanced out. Like when Gina Davis is kind of okay. And she's like Beetlejuice and he throws the zipper and she's got to unzip and talk through the zipper and say Beetlejuice. Like, that effect Great. looked dope, though, because like, awesome. she actually unzips it. Oh, by the way, going back to what you were saying about his jaw falling off, it was also really cool when it's first revealed they hold each other's hand and the one hand just starts to crack and yes. crumble. And you're like, yeah. oh, shit. It's fucking horrifying, dude. That shit is horrifying. Um, I think that's yeah. the one moment where you do feel like something bad could happen to the two of them. Yeah, that's where you're truly worried for the, the Maitlands. Um but I think those are the big scenes. I mean, I like, you know, I like I like all the classic stuff. I like Lydia dancing around to uh, Harry Belafonte. I think that stuff's great. There's a reason I think that stuff is iconic. But, like, those weird little moments, the Lost Souls room, the Maitland's aging and his jaw falling off, that's the shit, for whatever reason, that's, like, the first shit I think of when somebody's like, oh, yeah, you go to excited about Beetlejuice? I think of that weird fucking shit. Like, Winona Ryder... Dancing around is like tenth on my list of things that I think of when I think of Beetlejuice. Um, but yeah, I, I I love this movie, man. I mean, I think it's one, I think it's a classic for a reason. It's one of the best Tim Burton movies that I think it's one of the best movies that guy's ever made and probably will ever make. Um, and I'm excited to see. I'm excited to see the sequel, man. I I'm I'm going in with reserved hopes because we've seen this before. We've had Anchorman two. Dumb and Dumber 2, Super Troopers 2. We've had big comedy sequels to movies that were giganta hits that have become cult classics. Like, I'm a little scared because I feel like that curse, it's hard to break that curse. Um, But I think the trailer for this new one looks really cool. And I'm also psyched some of the new people they've brought in, like Willem Dafoe is randomly in it. So that'll be cool. Yeah, I know. I'm actually excited for some of the new cast members. And I'm excited too, uh, just to be a fucking jerk. 
I'm going to a fan <laughs> event. I'm going to an early access event, so I'm actually seeing it the day after tomorrow. I'm oh, I'm going. Shit. Yeah, me and the producer in the booth are going to get to see Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice early. So I'll Dang. actually be seeing the movie way early, and depending, I might actually see it again before our review. But um, yeah, I'm going day after tomorrow. And I should tell wow. you, this is a good time to announce it. We're going to have a guest for Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, Mark. Returning to the pod, Dasein, the artist known as Dasein. It felt like a good time to bring him back so that we could apologize for canceling the Patreon. <laughs> I'm so sorry for 12 Angry Men. <laughs> so, yeah, we're going to talk about Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice with Dasein next week. Be here. That'll be super fun, actually. It's It'll be, be nice good. to hear his take on a new movie like that. It'll be fun to hear his take on a super silly movie because that's that's also the fun I think of something like Beetlejuice. It, at its heart, it's a silly movie, and yeah. Dasein we know is a guy who likes very serious movies. So it'll be super interesting, I think, to hear his take on on what this like, is. I thought this was Tar too. That'd be fun <laughs> if you just put that on the invite. He's like, hey. yeah, I tricked him. <laughs> but I mean, okay, Psych. so at this. There's one thing actually that I did appreciate about this movie, as zany as it is. Like I, what I love about Tim Burton is he'll always put in like, call it necessarily a heavy to- topic, but like a very human topic where she's so unsatisfied with her life that she's like, "I wish I was dead so I could be with you two. Because they're a, a, to a degree, the two of them are like her de facto parents because yeah. her other ones are so far removed with their careers that. These, this this ghost couple is her essentially her family. So it, I think it does... The good thing about Tim Burton is he'll always throw those things into his movies. So they're actually very humanized. So I can honestly see, like, Dasein enjoying stuff like that. So. Dude, that's actually a really good point, dude. You made me... You know what? It's kind of crazy. I know you love... Uh, I love hearing that you love Edward Scissorhands. I would not have pegged you to love Edward Scissorhands. That's actually one I think I've seen the least. I think I've maybe seen it twice. I don't remember it very well. I mean, I know, I know, you know, he's landed in pop culture, but um, I think I know Edward Scissorhands more from the jokes in, on, like, The Simpsons and The Critic and shit like that than oh, I do yeah. from his movie. So now you're kind of making me want to go back and rewatch that. It's been a long Dude, that- time since I've seen it. That movie always gets me in the feels. It's like a really, especially Vincent Price, and I don't know. I love, I love that movie. It's it's been in the it's news. The it's been in the one. news lately because Tom Cruise. Oh, really? Because Tim Burton and Beetle is in the news because of Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice, and they were talking to Tom yeah. Cruise, and Tom. They were like, "It was revealed before Johnny Depp was cast. It was to be Tom Cruise as Edward Scissorhands, which is true. And wow, the reason he's not in the movie." Is because it was revealed that Tom Cruise had all these questions for Tim Burton, like that he couldn't answer. Like he was like, "How does he use the bathroom?" What? No, I'm not kidding. That's the one that always comes up. He's like, "How would I use the bathroom? Why am I like this?" And Tim Burton's just like, "Cause it's a fantastical, cause it's a made up thing. I want you to just act like this guy." And Tom Cruise couldn't like, wrap his head around movies? it. <laughs> yes, and he couldn't, an- and because he couldn't answer the questions, Tom Cruise backed out. And we got wow. Johnny Depp, which actually wound up working out for everybody, I think. What if Tom Cruise oh. did it and he did it as like a method actor and chopped Wasn't his own dick off? Who? Wasn't it Gary Oldman? Wasn't it Gary Coleman? Oldman! Oh, Gary Coleman would have been Coleman. funny, dude, if it was oh, Gary Coleman. <laughs> dude, could that be Gary Coleman? No, was it Gary Oldman? Instead of Edward Scissorhands, he's got the little kid scissors for hands. <laughs> oh my God. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> dude, no! that would be awesome. No, it was not Gary Oldman. Oh, was it a different? I think so, but Tom Cruise was the original Edward Scissorhands, no and because Tim Burton could not answer how he would use the bathroom and other questions that Tom Cruise had, apparently Tom Cruise has many questions for his directors. If they cannot answer them, he leaves. Wow, <laughs> so, dang. Diva. You know, Tim Burton's like, look, because I'm Tim Burton, I don't know, because it's fantastical. I don't know, because I said so, because I'm your boss. I think certain... <laughs> <laughs> there are certain directors where you should just go into it. Like, just go with David, it. David Lynch is kind of like you're, you're. You're not. Why would you? Why would you bug? Yeah, you couldn't it? ask What's that guy anything. This and it's like it fucking weird, <laughs> dude. Have you seen that footage of him where he's like, where a producer comes up to him on uh, Twin Peaks: oh, The Return, and they're like, "Hey, this scene's running a little long." He's like, "Who cares how long a fucking scene is?" You know what I'm talking about? Wait, let's see if you I can find it. Crazy. That. In the comments section, when I saw that, everyone was shitting on David Lynch. 
And I was just like, don't you, this guy's a fucking artist. Leave him alone. All right, here we don't go. Let's... interrupt his shit. Yeah, don't interrupt David Lynch, you psychos. Mark, <laughs> let's watch this clip. Cut the time down. I love what, what is this with everybody? No, 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 no. What is it? It's really? Only me. It's Why? My I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm serious. <laughs> fucking A, man. It drives me nuts. Who gives a fucking shit how long a scene is? Okay. Now let's see here. <laughs> Do you want to cut the time down? Who <laughs> gives a fucking shit? <laughs> Holy crap, that's funny. You know what's the best part about that? He's complaining about it, and then it's it's been clipped into this really short form media <laughs> of fun, which is his nightmare. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I want to see too if there's what? like a if there's like a Tom Cruise video, but I don't think there is. I think it's it's gonna be like long. It's gonna be like Entertainment Tonight. Like it was revealed that Tom didn't like tim's answers so i'm yeah, not gonna be like this that. like two hour youtube video from some film nerd that's just yeah. like i'm gonna get into why cam cruz didn't choose to work in beetle or edward scissorhands i told you and but before we begin it's the same thing we do at the top of this podcast click like and subscribe <laughs> yeah don't forget to ring the bell and like and subscribe for more ring content. Next week, I'll be coming out with my expose on American Eagle Outfitters. Tune in then. <laughs> I applied for a job there and couldn't get one. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have abs. <laughs> I didn't have any abs. They said, they said, what, what hours are you available? And then how many abs do you have? <laughs> and I couldn't answer the second question. <laughs> so... He doesn't get the job. Abs do you have? How many abs do you have? <laughs> Mark, is that is that it for you for Beetlejuice? <laughs> Feels like we're coming to the end of this thing. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it's it's such a. I, I'm I would just be repeating myself, but yeah. I would just say like if to any conservatives out. Sorry, I have allergies. Let me just wipe my nose. I have not been doing. Cocaine. So you're speaking strictly anyway, to to Donald Trump and all Trump. Which is just for all the, the Trumpers out there. Just for the Trumpies. This is not a satanic movie. It's very fun. Watch it. Me Listen, love, also not satanic. And I saw the Beetlejuice on the TV. I said his name three times. He never showed up. He's a fraud. Okay. He's a loser. <laughs> I said it. He's he didn't a liar. show. <laughs> he lies. Fake news. I said Beetlejuice three times in the mirror. Nothing fake. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you want to do some racks, oh, buddy? Man. Yeah, let's do it, boo. Wait, did, you it. didn't have anything else to say about this guy? The way? No, except that I think it's I, it's one of my top Tim Burton movies, and I love it. It's you know, it's funny. I I kind of not dreaded this episode because I was just excited to hear you talk about it. But it's hard to talk about movies, I think, in a meaningful way when they're this ingrained in your life. Does that make sense? It feels daunting because well, you're like, like you have how the fuck am I going to review it, yeah. Terminator 2? How am I going to speak to – how am I going to say things that Roger Ebert has – you know what I mean? Like yeah. just crazy think, shit. I'm like, well, you know I, I'm just going to tell you things you already know. Beetlejuice is fucking well, the thing, excellent. The thing is it's like there's so few bad things to say about it and then you kind of have this thing of like we're a movie podcast. We should be more critical. We should talk about more of the technical aspects in it. What makes it a good? But some movies are just like it's just a fucking fun. It's movie, just and great. There's not yeah. really much else you want to get into detail about. Like, why would you want to like do a deep dive into a movie that you're already having fun with? So yes. you might as well just praise it. For you know being what? Fun exactly right. People to watch it. It's the equivalent of when somebody dissects a joke to tell you why it's funny, and it kills the joke. It kills the <laughs> yeah. comedy. At the expense of killing Beetlejuice, we're just not going to dig in any deeper. That's it. We <laughs> loved it, Mark. I'm so happy you loved it, man. Me too. I'm. I'm. I was pleasantly surprised after all the years of it getting bashed by idiots that 
Never watched it. Mark, That's why have you, you got to watch stuff. Have you finally told your mom that Beetlejuice is not the satanic movie that she thinks it is? No, I have to. When she comes back from Singapore, I'll tell, her. tell her. And then she'll have a heart attack. <laughs> I love that she My went son to... is going to hell. I love that she went to Alien Romulus, but Beetlejuice is a problem. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's funny? I Okay, so after Alien Rom- Romulus... By the way, the funny part of taking her to Alien Romulus is the guy that was checking the tickets. He's like... Enjoy the gore fest, and I was all like, "Oh no!" You were like, "Oh so no!" At the, at the end of it, I was like, "So, mom, on a scale of one to ten, what would you give it?" She's like, two. Two. <laughs> Mark, she hated. She was so traumatized by Alien Romulus, she left the country. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> by the way, I also have to apologize to the actor that plays the last alien creature. I was like, "This CG nightmare piece of shit." And it's a real human. It's a real you know, guy. Like, so my apologize. I apologize to that guy. I totally didn't mean go. that. There you anyway, go, Mark. It's way it's better okay. now that I know it's a real person. <laughs> You're uncanceled, Mark. No, thank you. Canceled. Haven't heard that in a while. <laughs> Mark, we lift your cancellation. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> let's do it, Mark. Before I'm not going to do what I did last week, where I accidentally Oscared you and cut you off with the theme song. Here we go, Mark. Are you ready for Get Wrecked? <laughs> I'm about to ask you a question. No, I won't. <laughs> well, I know on facts, not recommendations, but thank you. And thank you. No, I'm kidding. I used to say that on our Patreon, but it's dead. <laughs> um, that, wait, did you just do that out of habit? I did it out of habit. It's just like I launched right into it. Mark, how many wrecks do you have this week? I think I got, okay, hold on. Let me, I think I have to be a bit careful because I think some of them I may use for an upcoming episode. Oh, yes, save those, save those. Well, I'll tell um, you this. I I have have, three. Oh, I have three. This is perfect. Oh, perfect. This is perfect. So maybe what we'll do is let's just run through them. You want to start? What what do you got, man? What do you got? Yeah, I I could do it. Well, I saw finally on the big screen Spartacus. (laughs) <laughs> and that yeah. was like one of the coolest experiences ever. Uh, the Paris theaters having this uh, 70 millimeter Dolby Atmos big and loud series. So one of them was uh, Spartacus. And even here's the thing is this movie is so good, even though I had the, like I'm short and everyone that goes to the Paris theater is like it's in the rich neighborhood. So I guess they ate a lot of food when they were kids, whereas I didn't because I poor. So everyone there is like a six foot four <laughs> film nerd. And I was just like peering my head through these goddamn tree ends trying to see like Can a you, section this of this was the, fucking the subject of print. our of our text thread this weekend was Mark's terrible time at the Paris theater. So you had a terrible experience, but you still enjoyed seeing the movie. Yeah, I mean, the, the sound was great, and, like, it's so just they, a phenomenal They at least movie. were able to pay off the loud part portion of big and loud. Yeah, they got Not the big. loud part. They're fucking... Paris Theater, your goddamn screen is too small for doing 70 millimeter showings. Stop it. Just, like... The, and the print had all these fucking lines through it. It's like, just give us a nice digital print, because they... You know what the funny thing is? They show you the ad for the series, and it's probably been cut in 4K using, oh, yeah. like, digital elements. Oh, yeah. So it looks just glorious on there. And then you go there and it's like the you the seventy minute they didn't they keystoned it improperly, so like the edges were like slightly bent. And then oh, like I said, God. you have all these like super tall people and it's just like just raise the damn screen because you're obviously just, too cheap to do stadium seating. Give us dumb DCP. Fucks. Just give us a DCP. Dude, that's the big and they're big and loud is the people. It's the giant people. That's what they meant, yeah, Mark. Yeah, they're big and they're loud too, because it's like <laughs> some of these people are just like the it's you know why it's loud because even if you're tall some other taller guy or someone of the same size sits in front so the whole fe- i swear to god every time i've been to this theater except with the exception of another movie i'm in a wreck every time this happens it's people someone goes like this they shift their body because they yep. can't see around the other tall guy but then the person behind them you just hear or so that like, you just hear you'll hear a chair shift <laughs> Followed by the sigh from the person behind Mark. them, because now they're brave. As they are you are you ahead. going back to the to the big and loud series? Because if you are, you should bring a phone book and just sit on top of that, so you're super high <laughs> <No>. up. <laughs> just tell people it's Dude, for your back or something. They'll never know. This the the scary thing about go. They have great programming, but the thing is, you never know who you're going to sit next to. 
Or oh it's, it's going to be in front of you. So you, the thing is, in, and nowadays because of pre-shows, everybody shows up like a little bit later. Yep. They'll just be there like, nobody's obstructing me. And then just as the movie's about to start, comes all the family these fucking of Vikings. giant people like yeah. file in. Yeah. The Vikings <laughs> like, come in off the fjord. Mark's got to sit behind eight of them. Pass me the moon these, fisk, yeah? Okay. These, these nerds. <laughs> <laughs> these nerds are also going bald. So they all wear hats and they keep them on. So if the guy sits at an angle, then it's like, now I got this fucking you hat the bill going into the screen. Okay. Well, as a fellow balding guy who has to wear a hat, I understand that. <laughs> but I at least have the decency to take my hat off. Do you remember when we went to T2? The old guy behind us was like, can you take your fucking hat off? And I was like, only because you act, <laughs> asked so nicely. Jesus. What if that was me time travel? <laughs> that was you. Yeah. I don't want to see a I'll oh, just fucking asshole. Take your fucking hat off. There you go. Mark saw Spartacus. Mark, did they have an intermission? Spartacus is very long. <laughs> long movie. They did, yeah. How long was your intermission? I think it was like 15 minutes. And everyone oh, there was like, they're all like old nerds too. So everyone filed to the toilet. And I was like, yep. oh, this is how it looks when there's no one sitting in front of you. <laughs> it looks great. <laughs> so there you go, Spartacus. All right. Mark, what's next for you on the Rex, buddy? Oh, should I just go through all of them? Oh, yeah. Run through. Run through, buddy. Okay. So another movie I saw there, this I actually saw it this morning, was Gravity. And Holy God shit. God damn. I, here's the, my thing with Gravity. When it first came out, I think I saw it like three or four times. We saw it together. I remember and that. I, yeah. And then after that, after we had seen it, and I'd gone like <laughs> yeah. the other three times. <laughs> hey, Mark, remember when we saw Gravity? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it was not the highlight not of his four screenings, <laughs> let me tell you. Yeah, I guess. Wait. Did we see it in a premium theater? We saw it at the 84th with the recliners where the guy fell asleep during oh, Riddick and was snoring. Right. Yeah, we saw it at the at the 84th <laughs> Riddick Theater. <laughs> that's where we saw all the random movies. Dude, that's crazy how often we went to 84th Street. We and went that there wasn't a lot. really a great theater. No, fuck no, it was not. We saw a lot Dude, of movies like, there. And a lot of weirdos. There's like, do you, I remember how many times we would just walk up the aisle after the movie and there would just be like an unhoused person with their like shoes off, just yeah. reclined out. A guy out. fully like passed out with no shoes, sometimes <laughs> no pants or ripped pants. You know, he didn't take, he didn't rip his pants for the movies, ladies and gentlemen. His pants were ripped automatically. <laughs> Mark, you saw Gravity today. How was it? <laughs> Did you That's have the crazy. same problem with the Treant people? <laughs> No, so this time nobody, and because it's probably it's a holiday and nobody's yes. going to the movies because they have families to hang out, whereas I'm hanging down. So I went and it was like, it was perfect. There's no, the, here's the thing about this movie. It's not a movie that you would want to see on a small screen. I'm sorry. It's just no, too no, yeah. big. Yeah. And there's too much cool shit happening for it to be. That's a weird sound. Anyway, it was, I, I just heard some weird scraping sound. I hope I'm not going to die. Oh, jeez. Anyway, Mark's in the middle of a home so, invasion. <laughs> it was, like, glorious. It was super loud. It was the... It's kind of interesting to go from, like, a movie like Spartacus, where they didn't really have these, like, crazy sound mixes, to, like, a true Dolby Atmos experience, where when George Clooney's character is floating around, you hear him going behind you. When he's above you, you hear that. Holy so shit. So it was, like, a phenomenal oral experience not oral <laughs> ah yeah it was buddy <laughs> no it was like it was it was glorious and i think I at think spartacus that, I hope, oh. he was sitting behind the heads at gravity he got the head <laughs> and that's the difference people <laughs> and that's why the second screening was better <laughs> welcome to big and loud <laughs> at the paris Long theater and hard. <laughs> the paris join theater. us next week for long and hard <laughs> Mark, uh, so wait, did the Paris Theater actually come through though with like the Atmos, with the Atmos? Oh man, it's side yeah, of it's things. Great. Okay, yeah, great. That's it was good. great. But the only, like I said, I just happen to luck out. If you're a short bastard like me, take the mezzanine level and sit in the front. There you That's go. your only option as now a short know. bastard. Now you know. Yeah. I've been in that theater too, so I know it is tiny. I actually went, the producer in the booth and I, when we were still in New York, we went to a 
anniversary screening, an anniversary screening of The Breakfast Club that was attended oh. by the, the cast afterwards. They had a Q&A. Yeah. Jess and I didn't know. We just were there for the movie. We love The Breakfast Club. So we, we see the movie. Credit starts to roll. And we're like, all right, do we want to get the fuck out of here? Let's go get dinner. We're starving. Lights come on. Fucking Kevin Smith, who's not in the movie... Kevin Smith comes out as, like, the moderator. He's like, wait, what's up, guys? I'm here to talk about Breakfast Club. And here comes the Whoa. cast filing out, like, Molly Ringwald, Andrew McCarthy. And Jess and I were like, we're hungry. And we got up and left. And it was very obvious. Like, the cast of the Breakfast Club definitely saw us leaving. Wow. But we didn't care. We didn't give a shit. Did you not want to hear the terrible audience? No, Questions? I had no, I had Q and A's with a fucking, it is like nails on a chalkboard to me. So I would rather run to any place other than that. I was, even I was happy noticed, to see the movie and that was it. Even moderated, they're annoying. It's they're like, terrible. Oh, another moderated dumb question. Yeah. Terrible. Um, all right, Mark, what else you got on your racks, buddy? Okay. I think, oh, actually, you know what? I have two more, but I'll go through them really quick. Uh, as you and I know, Frazier's on hiatus till what September it's the ne the next season's coming up for Frazier so I had like a I wanted to see something with Kelsey Grammer, Grammer in it because these guys fucking hilarious and I just happened to get a recommendation from it was HBO Max and it was the Pentagon Wars which is a movie they made and it was pretty like it was just like a fun movie to have on and you kind of like realize how stupid the military is and how wasteful they are at spending and it's just run by a bunch of wow. Idiots. He's been in a bunch of random military comedies too. Because um, you know what I thought you were gonna say. I thought you was gonna say you watched McHale's Navy, which is the other big comedy no, that not. Kelsey Grammer was in. It was based on an old sitcom from the '60s about like kind of silly, silly shenanigans on a submarine, and he plays McHale. Oh, really? He's like he's the captain of a I'm submarine. Writing this down now. It's a comedy. There are all these silly people in it on board the sub. It's a really fun movie. Pat Oswalt is in it. Uh, Harlan really? Williams, the Rocket Man, is in it. There's a bunch of random people on his crew. It's a super fun little time capsule of a '90s comedy, McHale's Navy. Or no, I'm sorry, not McHale's Navy, not McHale's Navy. I'm sorry, I fucked up. There were two. It's kind of like Volcano and Dante's Peak, right? There are two oh. silly naval movies. There's McHale's Navy. I'm sorry, which was Tom Arnold. I wrote That's, the raw one down. The Kelsey Grammer one you got to write down is Down Periscope. That's his movie. Down Periscope. Okay. It's called that Down Periscope. Familiar, actually. Listen, I would watch Down Periscope first. If you like Down okay. Periscope, then and you want some more naval hijinks, then I would go to McHale's Navy. But I would not watch McHale's Navy first because then you won't watch any of them. <laughs> McHale's Wait, Navy, oh, it... it's a serious downgrade because Down Periscope has Kelsey Grammer and that all-star cast. McHale's Navy is led by Tom Arnold. <laughs> so I'll leave you with that. <laughs> Down oh, Periscope, I bet you will like a lot because you like Kelsey Grammer. Yeah, I do. So I will there check that out. I wrote down the correct one this time yes. instead of that other piece of yes. crap. Just watch <laughs> Down Periscope. There you go, people. I got it right. I've been drinking. I got my McHale's Navy and Down Periscope. That sounds like confused. a mistake I would make. Shit. I know. It's just leading you with McHale's now Navy. Is a great comedy. You're like, I, I downloaded McHale's Navy and I didn't see Frasier at all. Oh, whoops. I sat Sorry. through the whole goddamn movie. <laughs> that was the booze talking. Uh, Mark, what else you got, buddy? Okay, the last one is probably, it's cheesy. I like Aaron Eckhart. I don't give a fuck. I'll watch anything he's in because I think he's entertaining as all hell. And I find him enjoyable. Uh, I watched Chief of Station, which is another one of these. You know those action movies where they're like, we have no money. Let's just go to Eastern Europe. <laughs> And yep. they just fuck up Eastern Europe and leave. It's one of those movies, but it's it's fun. It's got a little bit of intrigue, some good action. He's very capable. I wish he his star would grow because I enjoy watching him. But yeah, it's just a fun little popcorn movie. You can watch it when you're like, you know, if you're doing some. I know it sounds. Terrible. If you're folding but laundry, it's one of those movies that you can have in the background while you do some sort of task and can kind of watch at the same time. Or like if you're eating a it's loud a meal, movie. it doesn't really matter because you're like, yeah, I crunched through this line. I don't care. It's fun. Yeah, it's like I can eat Doritos for this because you know when you eat Doritos yes. and it's just drowned you can't hear all anything. dialogue out. Yep. <laughs> can't hear shit. 
can't hear shit. But it also means that it's a good movie because visually they tell the story, so you don't have to pay attention. To I also I don't like this new trend of of movie titles adding of where they shouldn't be. Like there's a Russell Crowe movie called Land of Bad, which it should just be called Badland. <laughs> This movie should be called Land Station Chief. Bad. It should just be called Station Chief, and you just told me it's called Chief of Station. Dude, it would be the equivalent to Kevin <laughs> Costner being like, I'm going to make The Postman, but I'm going to call it Man of Post. <laughs> Why? Man of mail. What are you getting from this? Why? I don't like this new fucking titling trend <laughs> of of. It's terrible. Cut it out. You know out. what it reminds me of? It's like when old people are like, the YouTube! <laughs> yes! It's just, like, it's too extra. It's extraneous. It's like, you don't need to do that. My dad still calls the internet the dot-coms. Well, hit me on the dot-coms. <laughs> <laughs> he does. He That's does. That's really old. If you're like, hey, do you have an email? And he's like, I don't know. And then he finds the youngest person in the room who works for him, and he goes, do we have a dot-coms? <laughs> and they're like, yes, we have an email. <laughs> He hears the word. He fucking knows what it is. He just <laughs> chooses not to. He's choosing to live in the 80s like a Cro-Magnon. Um, <laughs> that sounds like most dads. Mark, any other recs oh, for do, you, buddy? I do. I know I said I had three and I'm adding two more, but this one is something that I introduced <laughs> my... Mark's okay, just going to keep... Is, I've got about 12 more. <laughs> yeah, I swear to God, it's the end here. I've got 12 more. <laughs> Uh, Brian's grand me. One day well, I'll make a wreck. <laughs> One day. Okay. I hope I'm not over wrecking this movie to a degree where you don't want to see it, but oh, I introduced no. my brother and friend to the in, the, the hidden. Fuck man, that movie is just so goddamn good. It's my second time watch watching it. it, so the hidden. Gotta, gotta watch, watch that, that fucking movie. I gotta watch There's it. There's a lot of funny stuff I wanna I wanna talk to you about that movie. You I would love what? to force you to do a retro review of that movie, to be it's honest. It's on my list. Maybe we should... Fuck, okay. I, I got so much shit I gotta it, watch. I would consider it kind of like a horror movie, almost. Okay. I don't want right. to ruin anything. You should not... By the way, to the audience, to you, Matt, you should not read anything about this movie. You should not watch trailers. You should just trust me that this is a good fucking movie. It's oh. nothing you expect, and it's it's also a movie that's ahead of its time. And once you see it, you'll understand why. Interesting. Okay. And I can't really go into detail because I will spoil things. So I'm done now. I'm officially finished with my Rex. I apologize for adding two more. <laughs> no, you, no, Mark, you can add as many as you want. Oh, okay. I got 12 okay. more. <laughs> yeah. I got the Brothers Grimsby again. Brothers Grimsby. Ambulance. <laughs> yep. I knew he was going. Barb and Star. These are all the Mark hits. <laughs> Don't think I forgot, motherfucker. I, forgot I did it. Bring ambulance. Bring ambulance. <laughs> All right. Here are my Rex. I've only got three. Um, Mark, I texted you last night. I watched a movie called The Emerald Forest. Uh, if you don't know what this is, it's a movie by John Borman, who uh, is the guy who made Deliverance. Don't hold that against him. John Borman. He also directed Exorcist II, The Heretic. Don't hold that against him. This movie is legit a masterpiece. I would really? I would put it on the level with William Friedkin's Sorcerer, which is one of my favorite movies ever. In terms of like when you're you know how we love like these like crazy jungle movies where it's yeah. like how the fuck did they make this? How did the crew survive? How is this possible? These people faced <laughs> hell, broke their backs <laughs> just to give us these awesome scenes. The Emerald Forest is a movie that belongs on that list. Let me give you the premise. Let me give you the premise. This is not a spoiler. This is the story from the jump. Powers Booth, who is amazing. Love that guy. Is like a deforester guy. He shows up in the Amazon with a crew to basically knock over a big section of the Amazon so that they can start like putting up a dam. That's what he does. While he's there, he's moved his family there. He has two kids. One of the kids is a little fucker who keeps leaving. Like, hey, I'm one of these kids that likes to walk off on my own. Well, when the little kid walks off on his own into the woods, he discovers, like, a native tribesman out of fucking nowhere who appears out of nowhere. And he takes the boy. And 
I'm not kidding. And then you think it's going to be one of these movies where, like, Powers Booth is searching for his son. He's losing his mind. He's obsessing. No, dude. It cuts to a decade later. He's been searching for the son the whole time. And he goes back out. He goes every year to search for the son. And um, he finds him. He finds him as, like, a member of this tribe. He's been fully assimilated into this tribe that has no connection with humanity. It's fucking the crazy. Makes way more sense now. Yes. So like, basically, why he's playing tribesman? <laughs> no, I won't tell you any more than that. I just wanted to explain why the white guy is dressed like a savage. Um, <laughs> it's it goes savage. into it goes into so much detail in terms of the world of this tribe. Like, you know, you kind of love to learn about these like new people and kind of understand what this is. Like, this movie has lore like real lore and supposedly it's based on a true story which is kind of nuts uh, a rubber baron did actually lose his kid in the amazon and he kind of got taken in by a tribe and just lived with them the rest of his life he just became one of them um but this movie does take some very interesting some very interesting twists and turns uh it kind of functions a little like an action adventure movie um i don't want to say too much more because i i just wanted to set up the premise for you um it, it's it's fucking awesome I saw it because I blind. It was a blind buy. Kino Lorber had a sale, and I was like, "What the fuck is this?" I saw this Blu-ray, The Emerald Forest, and the producer of the booth actually picked it up for me just on a whim because she was like, "Hey, I saw oh, this. Wow. I thought you would dig this." Um, I loved it. It's fucking excellent. I don't know if you could, Mark. I'm sure you'll be able to find a copy. People at home Dude, listening, I cannot fucking find a copy of this thing. I think you just have to buy it because it's not ha- streaming anywhere. Dude, right? yes, no, it is impo- nearly impossible to find. I think the only way you can see it then is on disc, which is fucking crazy. Um, this is when I wish you lived closer because I could be like, dude, just come over. I'll give you the fucking movie. You can borrow yeah, it. No. Um, it's you become it's my amazing. blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm your blockbuster. Um. <laughs> It's it's an amazing movie, dude. It's a, it's a real great piece of work, and I honestly think you could put it as a double bill with Sorcerer, and it would feel oh man perfect. That sounds. Fucking I don't awesome, want to give any more of the plot away because there's so many great twists and turns. The way that like death is dealt with in the movie is also really cool. It's like really simple and real, which is kind of crazy. Like John Borman doesn't make a big deal about it. Like there's a side character that when he dies, you're like, holy fuck, that guy's dead. Like it just happens and it feels real and it's like fucking terrifying especially once you get into the fucking jungle with the people it's awesome like it kind of reminded me a little bit it's like a fusion of sorcerer and another movie i love apocalypto where it's like you get heavily invested in like the hierarchy of this tribe and you begin to learn how it works and they're like there's all this turmoil and infighting and like it's fucking awesome and John Borman Ooh. does not shy away. It gets really bloody and crazy. Great fucking movie. I loved it. The Emerald Forest. If you can find a copy, watch it. I may just wind up buying it because now I'm very intrigued. It's did you worth like it. Deliverance? It doesn't sound like it did. Um, right? I like it, but I don't think it's like the great movie that a lot of people make it out to be. I think that movie's kind of like a one trick pony. I also think there are way better yeah. movies to me that do the exact same thing. Like. Another movie with Powers Booth that I think is better than Deliverance is Southern Comfort, a movie you introduced me to. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's I think true. that's a I recently that's a better version of it. Deliverance, and I feel as doesn't it? it I kind of I agree with you in that it does feel like for its time period it was effective, but now that we've moved on, it's kind of like fallen yeah. by the wayside. It's just become a punchline, and 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 I know that sucks for that movie, but like I also just don't think the movie's as interesting as it thinks. It's like that Family Guy quote: "It insists upon itself." Like it thinks it's this great movie, and you're supposed to put all this, you're supposed to assign all this meaning to it. Um, I don't. I just think that that is like a very average movie. I think Southern Comfort is the better version of Deliverance. And Mark, oh yeah, thank that you for introducing me to nuts. that it's a fucking great movie. Of course, man. Um, next up on my list, Mark, you're not going to believe this. You can find this very easily. I watched the remake of John Woo's The Killer. So for oh. people at home who don't know this, John Woo remade his own movie. We were actually going to review it on this show until we were like, yeah, yeah we don't want to do that. So John Woo has made a movie called The Killer. I want to say in like 1992, 91, something like that. Yeah, it was around that early. Great early movie. 90s it's period. like The Killer and Hard Boiled are like the two big John Woo movies that hit over here in America and kind of made a path for him to direct movies over here. Well, he remade The Killer today, right now, with an all with an American or slightly like American European cast, basically. Um, 
A, I just – the film dork in me thinks that's interesting. Like, okay, this director's going to remake his own shit. But then I, I looked it up, dude. He's actually done this before. He made a movie called To Catch a Thief, and then he remade it in America as a TV movie called To Catch a Thief in 1996. Like, right oh, before wow. Broken Arrow hit big. Um, so he's got a history of doing this, which is really cool. I didn't know it. How crazy is that, dude? Not only does a director remake his own movie, he's done it twice now in his career. So I've, I've got to think Hard Boiled's coming, right? Because I know he made that Hard Boiled video game. I've got to think he's going to remake Hard Boiled because it feels like he's I mean, just remaking stuff. I hope that he keeps it in the line of like Silent Night where he's, he's keeping it gritty and dark and and just yeah. lots of violence and physical effects. Like, and all, I mean, dude, hard the boiled killer has, has all of that. Well, here's the thing is like, if he does hard boiled, how is he going to top how amazing those action yeah. sequences are? Hard boiled is like, a tough he's one totally to He's totally going to supplement it with like CG bullet hits and blood hits. Yes. And it's just not going to have that. Visceral. So yeah, I, I don't want to bullshit you. The killer remake, uh, which you can watch on Peacock, by the way, right now. Um, it does have CGI hits, bullet hits, but the the physical action, the stunt work, the choreography, it's it's kind of great. Like I don't know, man. I'm not. Oh. I I like Hard Boiled more than I like the original Killer. The Killer is a great movie. Yeah. But so I don't. I'm not coming into this with a bunch of like attachment or like oh no, you can't do that. Like I don't care. So to me, I was just down to watch this experiment. Basically, it felt like a film school experiment. All right, let's see if this guy can cover his own material how he's how he's gonna do it what 30 years later dude it's so fun it's just like a really fucking good movie it's just like a good solid retelling of the killer um the only negative i can ding on it is the cgi hits that's it everything else the physical fights the chases um his camera work and he leans into it man there's so much do- there's fucking doves from frame one there's just doves oh, no. when it goes to the fucking his credit directed by john woo i shit you not mark <laughs> it's a shot of nothing but doves flying like 20 doves <laughs> like Dude, that flapping around gotta, like give it up with those fucking doves. the doves here totally everywhere ruined mission impossible with yeah. his fucking dove he's still doing the doves but the action was great. It's got a really good cast. Um, Omar Sy, the French guy who played Lupin, is in it. He plays the cop. And the assassin is the, – they gender swap the assassin, but it, she actually did a really good job. It's Natalie Emmanuel from the Fast and Furious movies, the hacker. Oh, yeah. Isn't she also in, like, uh, Game of Thrones too? Right? Yes. She's... Yes. She was uh, – what's-her-face's uh, handmaiden or whatever. She was in love with Grey Worm. Yes. Khaleesi. Big old Khaleesi. Um, yeah, The Killer. It's on Peacock. Worth a watch. Um, I was surprised how good it was. I didn't expect much. So it's gotten me excited to check out Silent Night, but I'm waiting. I'm going to watch it for the holidays. I can't watch Silent Night Dude, right now. It's yeah, crazy. It's, it's way, it'll be way more fun if you do it that way. Yeah, yeah I'm going to wait for the holidays. Um, and lastly, my last one. Mark, I watched a super interesting movie called The Brother from Another Planet. Oh, I talked about this, I think, last that. week. I finally watched yeah. it. The Brother from Another Planet. This is directed by John Sayles. I found out about it from that cult movie docuseries I was watching. I was like, what the fuck movie is this? It's good. It's a, it is a little slow. I think you have to be in the mood for a film school movie. You have to be in the mood to be challenged a bit. And I don't just mean by the subject matter. I also mean by like, hey, it's not it's not super populist. Like, it challenges you. The movie's very episodic. But I was just in a mood. I was like in a fucking film school mood. I was like, let's see this thing. And I really I really liked it a lot. Um, they actually do some very cool things with the alien tech in the movie because they have no money. Um, it's just like a gritty <laughs> 80s New York movie. But here's what they do. I, I don't, don't think those, this is a spoiler. Oh, I love them too. So like you get to see the old, what the old A-Train looked like. And, you know, you probably oh, see what shit. Harlem looks like. Um, it takes place in Harlem. That's really where the movie is set. And the cool thing is, is it like the title suggests, uh, an alien crash lands on Earth, played by Joe Morton from T2 and Speed. Um, and he just happens to look like a black guy. The only alien thing about him are his feet. His feet look alien and weird. So he has to find shoes. He has to steal shoes to cover them up. But once he's there, he just assimilates. And the way he does it, it's kind of like, um, it's kind of like being there. He doesn't speak. So people just kind of assign whatever they want onto him. They're like, yeah, he gets it, right? And then he uses oh, this interesting. 
to kind of like infuse himself in people's lives. Like to some people, he's a friend to other people. He's a worker. You get to see him experience the different sides of humanity. Like he learns about good and evil and he learns about drugs and he learns about like, it was cool to watch him discover these things. Um, and meanwhile, while that's happening, this is where I was talking about. There are two bound alien bounty hunters that are after him who have come to this planet as well. And the way that these guys move is so fucking weird. I thought at first it was just like weird, like, like physical choreography, but he actually shot them backwards. And when he plays it forwards, their moves with people who are moving the correct way is fucking bizarre. Like even just them. That's a really cool. That's what I'm talking about. Like there's really cool, simple film school tricks they used to make that shit work. Like there's a cool bit too. I don't want to. I don't want to spoil it. There's a cool bit where they have like a piece of tech, like this tech, to um to shackle him because they want to catch him really bad. They want to cuff him. Ah, uh, I don't want to tell. You. I, I won't. I won't spoil it. Uh, it's really cool because it's super lo-fi, like low tech. You're like, how how's this gonna look? And the way that they did it was awesome. Like you totally buy it. Really? All of a sudden, it becomes like an alien pursuit movie, and you're like, whoa. <laughs> Yes, actually, I'm. I think I might. I'm gonna. I'm gonna see if. By the way, was this easier to watch than your last wreck? Is it easier to find a copy yes. of this? Or uh, yes, Mark, because it's on Tubi. Oh, I watched Ooh. the brother from another planet on Tubi, and they, they have a good transfer of it. It's like a 1080p transfer. Um, but look, this is a very low budge movie from the from the 80s, so mid 80s, I want to say. So it doesn't have a great transfer to begin with. It's one of these yeah. movies when you start it, there's no production shingle. It's like with many thanks to this department, this department, this country, finishing funds. Like it's very <laughs> official. You're like, am I supposed to see this slate? <laughs> what is this? <laughs> uh, no, that's part of the movie. Uh, it's it's really cool, man. It's just very different, especially to like I think – not to be this guy, but like I think different people will get different things out of the movie. I think if you are a black person, you'll probably get a lot more out of it because you'll be like, "Oh fuck, man, that's how that's how I feel alien in, in certain neighborhoods, or I feel like I'm being looked at weird." And to me, I got some of that stuff too because like it felt very much like an Im- like a movie about immigration, like what an Im- what an illegal immigrant or quote unquote illegal alien feels like trying to assimilate in this country, like. It's, it's in the hardest cool. city too. In the it's hardest just... fucking city. Yeah, his ship crash lands on Ellis Island. They're not they're not being secretive about what it is. They're trying to say. That's actually so, really I I appreciate those kind of movies. They're same. really cool. It's kind of like yeah. it helps you you kind of understand things better because it's just a completely foreign like it's you know, it's like an actual alien, but for some reason yes. because he's going through these things that humans go through, you're like, "Oh, now I get it." Yes. Which is the power of cinema, I guess. <laughs> the power of the cinema. <laughs> um, yeah, dude. Oh, no, it's true. No, no, but that's actually true, though, what you said. It can be two things. It's cheesy and it's true, though, because it, it does make a lot of sense. Like, I would just say be prepared because it is. it can be a bit challenging, especially if you're not in the mood. If you're like, oh, this is a little more slower paced. Like, you got to be in the mood for a slower paced movie. You got to be in the mood for something challenging. And... I will admit, there's a section, there's one episode of the movie that I thought was, like, very slow because I could not understand the guy he was with. And I thought it was just me being, like, an old man. But I looked it up online, and many people complain about the scene. You'll know it when you see it. It's the scene when he hangs out with the Rastafarian. I had no idea. They don't subtitle him. I had no idea what was being said. (laughs) He's the only guy not (laughs) subtitled. Oh, my God. "Ah." (laughs) And I was like, I don't know what's happening. Like, I understood what was happening, but it was clearly hinged on f- information he was giving him, and I had no idea what was happening. I had to, like, We're like, look I up... and I cannot understand this. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I had to look up what people interpreted how that scene, what that scene meant, so that I could get a grasp on it. And I was like, okay, okay. I Here's a question for you, though. Is it supposed to be like that? Are you really not? Is it supposed to be kind of like, as much as this guy doesn't understand him, he doesn't understand this guy? Is like... Or that's is a, it just that's a good point but he just like that guy is bad here no can't in understand the scene the i think it's just shitty audio in the scene he's clearly understanding what the guy is saying so i think because he's the cipher for us we're supposed to understand it i don't understand what's happening in that scene <laughs> i do like it. it's, not <laughs> it's not subtitled it's, it's not sort of subbed. like when you watch those reality shows and it's like some guy is subtitled because they have a slight accent and you're like 
Like, why okay. is this subtitled? <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Do you think people get offended, like, if they're speaking English, like, in, but they're, like, in Ireland, and they see subtitles, and they're like, what the bloody fuck? <laughs> Dude, I, th- I think I would be, if I was, like, say, for example, if it's, like, you know, they're like, hey, can we shoot with you, and you do the scene, and you, you finally do it, and then everyone else has no subtitles, and then you talk, Except and for you. just, like, the yellow words. You're like, ah! Fuck! I really no one knows what I'm saying. Nobody understands me. <laughs> yeah, dude. Um, yeah, Brother from Another Planet. It's on Tubi. Yeah, I should say so. Brother from Another Planet is on Tubi. The Killer remake is on Peacock. Emerald Forest. I'm sorry to say, is only on disc. So if you want to find that, you got to get the disc. And from my research, it's also only on disc. <laughs> <laughs> from. <laughs> From Mark's word on the street, Mark's <laughs> search on the street, it's only on disc. <laughs> That's it for me for the Rex. That was really fun. Those are some good ass Rex, bro. Hell yeah. I'm now, che- I dude, actually want to check out all of those now. I know. I really want to watch The Hidden now. Maybe I'll maybe I'll try and catch that tomorrow. Dude. Um, you will fucking love it. I can't wait because I've heard you talk about it on the show before, so I know it's like really good. And I, I could tell by the way you're talking to me about it that it's gonna be good because you are being very guarded about how you're talking about yeah, it. Yeah, I don't want to say it's good. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Don't try. I know if you, if you want if you like doing research and finding out shit, just fuck it. Do it after. The do movie. it after the movie. Okay, I'll do it after. The one thing hidden about this is it's a hidden gem. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> The only thing hidden about this is my IP address when I illegally acquired <laughs> I knew that would get and you. That's why we are sponsored by Nord VPN. Nord. <laughs> what the Nord? Avoid is it one of those Nord. stupid ones? There's Nord. <laughs> Surfshark. Surfshark's the other one. Welcome to Express Surfshark. VPN. <laughs> you can watch Netflix in Ireland, where they have to still subtitle people even though they speak English. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, next week we will be reviewing Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice. We will be reviewing it with friend of the show, special guest Da Sign, very so talented you, musician, very talented guy. He will be here. We'll have to tell him what we thought of Twelve Angry Men. Oh I shit! I better watch that. <laughs> <laughs> just say it's good. I'm just gonna say it's good. <laughs> Don't he listens to our show. But I watched it. He's going to hear us. We've talked about it already. We t- we reviewed it on another show, and last week we brought it up, and we both were saying, <laughs> yeah, it's good. I don't know what else to say. It's good. I was very blown away that one juror was the fucking grandpa from Problem Child, but it was a young <laughs> version of him because it's the 1950s, and I was like, oh, my God, Jack Warden is in this movie? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? He's the guy on the jury. <laughs> He's the guy on the jury that wants to go to the Yankees game. That's Jack Warden from Problem Child. I've only known him as an old man. I like how it's this, like, you know, this high piece of <laughs> cinema. And <laughs> that's your takeaway. Like, whoa, Problem Child. It's the guy from Problem Child. Oh, fuck that boy. <laughs> <laughs> so next week, we will say that 12 Angry Men is good because it is. I, it's good. It is good. It is good. Very it's no good Glenn movie. Gary, Glenn Ross, but it's it's good. It is good. It's no brother from another planet. It's no brother from another planet. Dude, brother from another planet is legit, though. It's good, dude. Wait till you see it. Wait till you see it. Mark's going to be like, I understood everything the Ross demands. <laughs> you put me on the I spot. I totally understood what he said. Blood clot. <laughs> How could you not understand, Matt? You're going to put me on the spot because I didn't understand the Rasta character. <laughs> you racist sack of shit. You <laughs> racist piece understand. of shit. Everything's not Irie. Everything's not Irie at all. <laughs> <laughs> That's it for us, ladies and gentlemen. We're out of here. Peace. Peace. I and I feel it. <laughs>